good to be back again. So, so the survey of Manitoba, province of Manitoba in the 1870s was part of a much larger survey of the recently acquired Hudson Bay Company territory in Western and Northern North America. In 1869, the Conservative government of John A. Macdonald had completed negotiations with the Imperial government in London for the purchase and transfer of Rupert's Land to Canada. Many of the settlers along the Red and Assiniboine River at the center of the fur trade in North America wanted incorporation as a province of Canada. A delegation was sent by the provisional government at Red River to negotiate terms of entry into Confederation. Paper will examine the records produced by the surveyors of the system established by Colonel J. S. Dennis, the Surveyor General for the Survey of Manitoba and Western Canada. Uh, the increasing pace of industrialization in Europe led, to Britain, led by Britain caused social and economic disruption through the 19th century. By the 1860s, the Hudson Bay Company's investors were responding to these changes and were looking at possible outcomes. Their decision was to move uh, towards the future in restructuring the company and to beyond, expand beyond just fur extraction to invest in different businesses. To this end, they were willing to relinquish control over the northern half of the continent, however not at a loss. Negotiations began in 1868 between the Government of Canada and the Imperial Government in London and, and representatives of the board and stockholders of the Hudson Bay Company. These were completed and the agreement was reached on the terms of on the terms and price for the transfer of the company's territories to North America in the, to the Government of Canada. There was considerable pressure on the Prime Minister and members of Cabinet to reach an agreement, particularly with the uncertainties presented by the relatively recent conclusion of the Civil War south of the 49th parallel. Canada was the suitor of choice, but there were other interests to the south. Perhaps the Prime Minister John A. Macdonald's haste to move forward to consolidate Canada's control of the territory of Rupert's Land uh, caused him to act prematurely in sending federal representatives to the Red River Settlement, the administrative seat of the Hudson, of the company's business empire in North America. Uh, Macdonald directed Colonel J.S. Dennis to proceed to Fort Garry in July of 1869 to begin preliminary survey work. Uh, unfortunately, Dennis and his team arrived in the settlement before the actual uh, date of transfer, but more importantly, MacDonald acted in total disregard to the colony established at the Forks in 1812 by Lord Selkirk, which had grown in size and was an act of civil society. Uh, this precipitated a political crisis which led to the creation of the provisional government usurping the authority of the governor and council for the district of Assiniboia, which elected representatives from each of the French and English parishes of the colony. The provisional government nominated delegates to go to Ottawa to negotiate terms for entry into confederation with the rest of Canada. This Macdonald had not anticipated in his vision of creating a transcontinental nation state. Negotiations set back the survey of Western Canada by about a year, but resulted in the creation of the province of Manitoba. I've incredibly compressed what happened in those two years of 69 to 70. Um, so uh, George Taylor uh, was a captain of the Hudson Bay Company's sloop at York Factory. Uh, which, uh, he'd been educated at the company's school at Fort Severn on, on the bay, including principles of navigation. George Simpson, the company's governor in North America, had called uh, uh, Taylor down to Fort Garry in 1836 with the assignment of surveying the settlement. Taylor's plan shows the survey characteristics that shaped the Red River settlement such as two mile long river lots with uh, additional land beyond for, for cattle grazing and haying. Although, re, although the Red River Settlement was resurveyed by the Dominion of Canada surveyors in the 1870s, Taylor's system and pattern were retained and still formed the basis of Winnipeg's le, uh, legal land uh, descriptions. Having communicated his intentions uh, to survey land for the settlement to the government of Canada, uh, Colonel Dennis decided he would proceed with establishing the location of the national, international boundary at the 49th parallel at a distance of 10 miles west from Pemina and extended the prime meridian northerly as far as Township 11. Dennis's plan for the international boundary and the prime meridian show the distribution of the townships north. Um, 
The parish of the Red River Settlement are shown along both the Assiniboine and Red Rivers. And the township system proposed by Dennis uh, basically uh, uh, modified version of what the Americans uh, were doing with townships. Uh, however, he wanted to have 64 sections of totaling 800 acres for each township. And he shows the plan uh, in the lower right hand corner. Um, the township system, uh, may, he, sorry, um, he also shows uh, where uh, uh, they, pardon me, so. Um, Uh, this uh, unsigned, undated manuscript map shows the projection of the proposed township survey system for the Northwest Territory. Wade and Ruggles uh, speculate that there is a preliminary drawing of a plan for Colonel Dennis was working on in 1869. The grid was only superimposed over an existing base map. Oh, sorry. On May 12, 1870, the province of Manitoba was born. The Manitoba Act set the provincial boundaries to include most of the former district of Assiniboia, with the 49th parallel at the southern border. Its small rectangular shape earned it the nickname the postage stamp uh, province. Mm -hmm. A.L. Russell, who had come out west with Dennis in 1869, returned with him in 1871. Uh, here he's uh, compiled one of the most uh, significant maps of Western Canada uh, ever drawn. Uh, this is uh, according to w uh, Workington and Ruggles again. Uh, this is the first official map of the new province of Manitoba. The map reflects Dennis's proposed plan for the survey of the West with townships uh, six of 64 sections, uh, which is uh, blown up here at the corner. Uh, it shows the boundaries along the 96th and 99th meridians west longitude and the northern border with 50 degrees, 30 minutes north latitude. The map published by the minister, oh, I'm going backwards, sorry, uh, folks. The map published by the Minister of Interior of the Dominion Lands Office in 31 December 1878 shows the operations of special surveys of standard meridians and parallels. So Manitoba is being surveyed as at the same time as the rest of Western Canada is, is the part of the project. Uh, the special triangulation survey tied other meridians further west to the first meridian established by Dennis in 69. This exercise and the overall program would appear to put into practice in Western Canada what the British had developed and refined in their trigonometrical survey of India, which had then had allowed them to map all of the subcontinent. Originally, the boundaries for Manitoba were, again, the 96th and 99th meridians, but this presented problems. In 1877, the first township line west of the 99th meridian became the boundary, and a similar shift was made to the west. Uh, in 1869, uh, Colonel Dennis had found a discrepancy in his determination of the international boundary, and his recommendation to Ottawa had resulted uh, in the creation of the International Boundary Commission survey of the 49th parallel from the northwest angle of the Lake of the Woods to the Rocky Mountains. Surveying began, began in 1872 and the British and Americans worked their way west to completion in 1874. <coughs> Boundary markers uh, were established at regular intervals along the line and were of a permanent nature. The accuracy of the methods used uh, assisted the survey of the Canadian West. Both the international boundary as well as the township corners were marked by mound markers, although the international boundary markers uh, were somewhat larger uh, in, for the boundary. Um, Colonel Dennis, also as surveyor general, issued field manuals for the surveyors of the West and he appointed examiners to check for computational errors. When, and these were again checked when they re came to Ottawa before plans were drawn. The International Boundary Collection, is a photograph collection, is a rich source of documenting the progress of the commissioned uh, proceeding from the Northwest Angle to the West. The British members are shown here in a moment of relaxation. Oops. 
After the negotiations of the Manitoba entry into the Confederation had been completed, the delegates had returned to Manitoba and the transfer of land uh, had been finalized. The survey could restart. The issue of surveying land for settlers to apply for quarter sections to commence their homesteading endeavors was a priority of the survey. Approximately 12 townships were surveyed either side of the river lot parishes and an additional nine townships were surveyed uh, just south of uh, Lake Manitoba between the lake and the river lots of the parish of Portage de Prairie along the Cinnaboyne River. The method of survey is clearly illustrated in the map. You can see the block surveys of the townships laid out in anticipation of individual townships um, being subdivided into sections. The correction lines can be noted as well. Map was issued with the surveyor's general report in 1872 and as the first official printed map of the province of Manitoba. The third slide shows the distribution of sections. Sections 11 to 28 were set aside for public school lands. Sections 8 and 26 were set aside for Hudson Bay lands. Um, the white uh, sections are homesteads and the gray hatching are the Canadian Pacific Railway land grant, the sales of which financed the construction of the transcontinental link. When only examining lines on the survey plans, it's easy to sometimes think that what you see is only a two-dimensional field until you see a map with contour lines and then realize the straight lines of the grid unfolding in front of you isn't necessarily an easy task when setting up and moving stations as the surveyors moved across the landscape. In, addi in addition, it's easy to think that sight lines are always unimpeded by vegetation until we read the information on the plan indicating the type of vegetation which in this case is scrub poplar, which is found intermitt intermittently across the prairie grasslands. It becomes um, uh, denser as you progress into the parkland zone of the no in going north. The principal concerns uh, uh, for the French and English settler population was the issue of continuing to hold their river lot farms, which they had acquired by grant or purchase under the authorization of the governor of the district of Assiniboia. The terms of the Manitoba Act included confirmation and granting of patent to holders of the individual lots. The survey of the river lots was completed in the most part between 1871 and 78. Although there had been some delay because of, uh, initially they assumed there were two, two miles from the river, but the settlers claimed they had access to an additional two miles uh, for a number of years, so patents were issued for four mile long farms. The second sheet shows the parishes of St. James, St. John's, and St. Boniface, all converging at the forks of the Red and the Cinnabine Rivers. The layout of the river lots became somewhat complex for the surveyors as they needed to follow George Taylor's solution to establishing the river lot boundaries. Books of the West written during the settlement period usually included maps of uh, questionable quality. J.C. Hamilton's map of the province of Manitoba provides an example of the type of maps which were published. During these, generally these were almost more of a decorative nature than an accurate representation of the facts on the ground. Uh, the, a number of errors are in, in this map, such as the CPR line extending west of the city of Selkirk, which was never built, or a steamboat on Lake Manitoba when one, before one was launched. The map does show names of towns and settlements as well as two Mennonite reserves and an Icelandic reserve on Lake Winnipeg just beyond the boundary in the north. There are only two re reserves indicated existing when in fact five reserves had been selected by their bands and had been surveyed. Uh, and this is, gives you a uh, view of what the uh, township plans uh, uh, looked like for the, the west. The surveyors are entrepreneurs, some less risk adverse than others. A number of surveys, surveyors applied for land in the West. Some speculated in the developing real estate market in the growing city of Winnipeg, particularly with the developing land boom in the 1880s. The village of Winnipeg, which had been developing at the forks close to Fort Garry, was incorporated as a city in 1874. The recently confirmed owners of river lots farms in the vicinity of the forks saw opportunities themselves and had started to hire surveyors to subdivide portions of their land into town lots. And these plans were subs consequently submitted and filed with the Provincial Land Titles Office. <coughs> these 
subdivisions spread out from the reserves set aside by the Hudson Bay Company under the terms of deed of surrender, which the company had already surveyed into a subdivision um, plan with housing lots for development. This map shows a revised route of the Transcontinental Railway, which in Italy initially had been planned at crossing the province's middle and heading west above Lake Manitoba onto Edmonton. The goal was to provide a means for the immigrant settlers to come out west, but it was also a means of persuading British Columbia to enter Confederation. The decision to go further south was to stay within the Fertile Belt. Uh, the map also shows the line from the south which reached reached St. Boniface in 1878 from St. Paul, Minnesota. There was a priority to survey the townships adjacent to the right of way of the, uh, the railway as the agreement between the CPR and the McDonald administration included a grant of 25 million acres of land. Every alternate section of the agricultural belt essentially about 44% of the farmable land. George McPhillips is perhaps the most outstanding example from this period as, as an entrepreneur. He began surveying the West in 1871. He perverse, produced the first fire insurance plans for the city of Winnipeg. He would go on with his brother to produce the McPhillips Brothers City Atlas of Winnipeg with regular revisions reflecting the growth of the city. The atlas sheets were derived from plans submitted by the land, to the land titles office by surveyors. Uh, the atlas includes index plans by surveyor name and date of survey. In 1874, the surveyors in the West were already beginning to talk about forming an organization, meeting in the offices of Colonel Dennis in Winnipeg in 1874. Uh, they had, dis had discussions of principles for the organization. The Association of Manitoba Land Sur Surveyors was incorporated in 1881. Membership was by nomination with a vote by membership to determine ag agreement, and it, it is the oldest organization of its kind in Canada. The Archives of Manitoba has the early records created by the association, which includes indentures of apprenticeship between land surveyors and pupils, uh, membership stub receipt stub books, and the minutes. In the 12 years between <coughs> 1869 and 1881, uh, there were 104 surveyors completing the survey of Manitoba. Almost from the beginning, the premiers of Manitoba had asked Ottawa to expand the province's boundaries. Uh, and regardless of the party, had also argued for the control of the provincial natural resources, specifically the control of the sale of homestead lands as a revenue source for the province. However, this was not achieved until uh, 1930 with the transfer of natural resources to the prairie provinces. Manitoba size had increased in 1881 by five times which satisfied some of the province's demands. The boundaries were extended once again to what we have at the present in 1912. Transfer of natural resources in 1930 also resulted in the transfer of records of the Department of Interior to the prairie provinces. <coughs> These included the records of administration of the homestead records, uh, as well as 183 cubic feet of surveyors' field notes and diaries, and 68 volumes of manuscript township plans. And those are safely in the archives. So, thank you. There's time for a couple questions for Mark. Okay. Um, how the surveying worked, um, obviously there were First Nations people on the land already, how that worked, and then if there had any effects on uh, the cartography and the surveying. Well, that's part of the compressed history that I kind of try to squeeze in. Um, basically, um, uh, their main source of uh, food, if you will, was the bison, and the bison herds were uh, decreasing significantly on the, on the Great Plains, both, on, uh, both sides of the border. Um, and they were, feel, um, I, again, I'm paraphrasing my inter understanding. Uh, they were basically making choices of, for their future. Um, so the idea of signing treaties and uh, for specific uh, reserves 
uh, with uh, compensation in terms of providing education, I think, is one of them. Um, um, uh, training to for becoming farmers, um, food supplies in times of need, um, like so, and plus fishing gear and things like this. Um, they thought this was a good choice to make, so they signed the treaties because they were basically really very hard pressed. Um, so this is the choices they made. Did the Department of Indian Affairs, which was started around the 18, in the mid-1870s, um, fulfill a lot of its requirements? No. Uh, you're still ongoing uh, um, court cases for enlarging the, the reserves because the argument is they weren't, not everyone was counted when they made this. Um, so there's court cases also in terms of the natural resources they can use because basically they could hunt and fish wherever they wanted and things like this. So it's not necessarily turned out how it looked on paper, as so often is the case. Um, in terms of uh, the uh, people from what's now Manitoba back in the past, uh, they would be categorized, or the French speakers were categorized as Métis. The English, it's all mixed ancestry families. Uh, so they've had a recently a two, two years ago now, I think, major federal court case about uh, their rights and that they were shortchanged, so to speak, and there was a, been a major settlement in that as well. So it's lots of ups and downs, and it's very lumpy bit of history. Not necessarily happy story all the time, but uh, the settlers kept coming and filling up the, the quarter sections, so we have what we have now in Canada. So. Many of the reserves aren't in very good shape, and is what I would th would think, you know. But it's all being wor worked on, I guess. So. Thanks, Martin. Okay. Thank you.